Hi folks, I'm Meath with Two Guys on a Ride, and today we're here at the Intermark Car Show in Osseo, Minnesota, and we're here with Ron. Ron, Ron Engel. Ron Engel. Right. And Ron is the owner of this Borg Ward, Isabella Coupe. Correct. 1960 model. Now, that talk about a rare car. They're very rare. Yes. I mean, so rare that a lot of people have not even heard of them. That's true. Right? And that's why it's here. And that's, why, and that's why it's here. Right. So, um, you know, Ron, start with, uh, how did you have an interest in this car? What was the first thing that sparked uh, that interest? Uh, well, I was born in Billings, Montana. And when I was in high school in 1957, this model came out. And there, believe it or not, there was a board work dealer in Billings, Montana. And Okay. So, of course, I could not afford it because it was like $3,500. $3, but Borgord went out of business uh, in 1961, and some of the used cars were uh, affordable, and I bought a, one of their station wagons. Okay. And I drove that in college, drove it uh, from Montana to Arizona, and uh, so that's uh, what... Uh, that was a trigger. That was, was a trigger, and then when I retired, I thought, gee, i got to have one of those... Right, you want that dream car. Right. So where where did you find this one? Uh, I found this in uh, near Portland, Oregon. There was a foreign car dealer, uh, a mechanic who, believe it or not, was a former Borgward mechanic who <laughs> immigrated to this country from Holland. What are the chances? So you, so yeah. you had someone maintaining and working on the car that actually was trained by them. Yes, yes. So mechanically, it was it was in very good condition. Uh, all of the uh, the paint it was repainted about 40 years ago. Okay, still looks great. They and then um, but the chrome, the chrome is the original. Chrome, chrome is original. Uh, the emblems there are a couple of the emblems that that have been reproduced and that I have put on the car. Okay, so like the like the hood one right here. Uh, no, that's original. This one's original. Yeah. Okay, and. Uh, it's all original. Okay, this part's all original. And th this was kind of based off the sedan, right? Yes. We had yes. talked earlier, you said the whole front half up to the A-pillar was basically identical to the sedan. Right. In, in Germany, okay, Borgward started making cars from the, in the late 20s, and then they went out of business in 61. After the war, the plant in, located in Bremen, Germany, was destroyed, and he established uh, three plants, one for the Borgward, one for the Lloyd and one for the Goliath. So sort of like Chrysler Plymouth Dodge, only it was Borgward, Goliath, Lloyd. Okay. And uh, the, the sedan, the Borgward sedan was very popular. They sold hundreds of thousands of them. Okay. And uh, then in 1957, he decided to get a little, a little sporty uh, and they designed uh, this, uh, this Isabella Coupe which is based on the sedan, the front half of the sedan, uh, and then the from and then going back, they redesigned. Okay, the, the so coupe. basically from eight, eight pillar back, then it's right. been redesigned. And this would have been, you know, a, comp, a competitor for say the Mercedes Benz, the, the, the Mercedes 190, 190, 180, 190, 190. Okay, yes, right. Uh, just right. to give a little comparison. Right. Yeah. Well, Borgward did a lot of racing. And uh, especially in Formula Two, uh, and they were very, uh, very successful in okay. the racing. So, uh, what kind of uh, engine has it? It's, it's a four-cylinder, uh, 1.5 liter, overhead cam. Okay. A four-speed transmission, the four on the tree. Okay, that's and unusual to have it on the tree instead of the floor. Yes, it is for a sport yeah. coupe. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Uh, it's not, it's designed, uh, it's a real workhorse engine. Never heard of one blowing up. Okay. But of course other things can go like. <laughs> can go wrong. Yeah, right. Like a water pump. Uh, and uh, it's a six cylinder, uh, I mean, uh, excuse me, six volts. Uh, I have not changed it. Okay. Uh, a lot of people, you know, Converted switch over to 12. To, to 12. Mm -hmm. But I'm very very happy as long as you've got the negative ground uh you're you're okay with a six volt well that is extremely clean so when you when you got it that's pretty much how the engine looked yes yes Boy. yeah and i drive it out to california uh well i've driven it out there six or seven times 
uh, so this to board board meets. Long trips, not just short. Right. Oh yeah. 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 So is three thousand miles. You, and, so you drive it. I mean, it's not. Oh yes. Yeah. It's, it's a, a very, museum piece. It's a no, no, no. I I drive it uh, out to California, three thousand miles. Uh, wow, that's got to say a lot for your confidence in the car. Yes. Well, I I, mean, I do <laughs> carry some spare parts with me right. in the trunk, but. Uh, I'm going Overall, to bet you those are things you can pull over and do on the side of the road relatively quickly. Right, right. Right. I did. The only problem I've ever had was a water pump going out in Missoula, Montana, on the way to British Columbia for a board okay. board meet, and uh, I was able to to switch out. I had to spare and uh, did it in like two and a half hours. Wow. So you are you you are mechanically inclined. Well, uh, you, 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 no, 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 well about it. You got to be if you're going to take off a water pump and fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, how about how many miles does the car have on it currently? Uh, it's about one hundred and fifty thousand. About one hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. Right. Right. And uh, and of those one hundred and fifty thousand, how much have you put on it? Like, how much did you buy it? Uh, when you bought it, how I, many miles did it have on it? Uh, if you can remember. I, I put on about uh, sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. Right. Okay. Let's uh, let's. I uh, I just before we go, I love the the uh, turn signals up at the top. And that the chrome on the headlamps actually stuck out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So on the interior, which I, I, you know, tell us what's original and what has been re redone. Well, it's all original except for that floor mat down there okay. uh, on the, the carpet on the floor. Okay. Uh, and it's then all this original. trim piece, you yes. said you replaced this because it had sun faded. Right, right. And this is all wood. Yes, this solid wood. And, and if you look on the inside, I mean, there's wood trim around all the windows. And that's original wood, yes. It's a veneer. Wow. I mean, that, that, that's, those are an incredible shape for, for the year. Right. Wow. That's some TLC there. And, of course, you did have a bench seat in the back as well. Yes. Yeah. And then you actually have some storage behind that bench seat that's separate from the trunk. Right. The whole area back there. Oh, so you could have a little extra interior storage, which is more than, uh, well, it's more than they have today. They advertise this Ooh, as a dog that's bench. That's a nice, a dog bench? Yeah. Okay. I like uh, that. I can't... like that door thud. Oh, yeah, that's solid. That is it? nice that's and nice solid. Sound. Wow. Yeah. So um, I, I, everything on the dash is functional. You know, you had, what, an AM radio, I'm assuming? It, well, it's FM and shortwave also. It's FM a German, and German radio. Okay. Right. Now, in the middle, you've got all these buttons going yes. on, all these white. Tell us kind of what these are. Okay, there's a windshield wiper, the uh, uh, the fan motor, the uh, parking lights, the fog lights, all of those things, the instruments. Oh, okay. And the, uh, the, I see, the... I see now that I get down a bit further, there's actually a, a symbol above each one. Yes, there is. So you can kind of see that. I couldn't see that from this angle. I thought, boy, how do you keep track of all those buttons that look the same? It, also, there's dual. It's one of the early car, earliest cars with dual zone air and heating. Oh, so that sure. the passenger has control over uh, whether I want heat you know, down on his feet or up above. Uh, and the, the driver also. So could they control whether it was heat or not heat or yes. just, okay, wow. Yeah, yeah. It was one of 1960, the... dual zone climate, I won't say it's auto climate control, but that's, yeah. that's incredible. Right. That's fun to hear those stories about, you know, things you think were invented in the modern age right. actually existed before. Now, down here you've got, on the left of the steering wheel, you've got an ignition. Yes. And then you've got another lock. Is that to lock the steering wheel in place? Uh, there, yes, and that is not functional anymore. So okay, but it, that's, it, that was standard on the car. That was standard, yes. Interesting. It also has, uh, on the, the, uh, uh, the steering wheel, the, uh, this is not, the horn is here. Oh. But this is called a Lichthupe. And that is to flash a person in front of you that you want to pass them on the oh, Autobahn. Oh, interesting. Like a high beam flash. Yeah, right. That's interesting. On the, on the Mercedes However, 190, it was a turn it, signal. When it was imported to the United States, uh, th that, was, that was forbidden. In, and so that it is not functional now. Okay. But still. <laughs> now, now it is, but at that time. Wow. Uh, they didn't want people flashing. So you uh, obviously electric windshield wipers. Yes. Okay. And, and there's a and there's also a wiper 
I mean a, a wasp uh, spray. Flute. Oh, a spray. Yeah. Yep, I see that now, right in the front there. Right. And it sprayed two different directions too. Okay, right. so it wasn't just up in the middle. Right. All right. Can we uh, go walk to the back here and let's take a look? I love this lens. Right in there. Yeah, that that rhombus is sort of the symbol for Borgward. Yeah, I mean that that's a huge. I mean because that goes the trunk space goes all the way up to here, and then you've got that additional storage from the back seat. Right. There's plenty. So of really, room. you've got from here all the way to the back of the front seats to store things. Right. Or right. one really big dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the two. Um, okay, so uh, now uh, on an interesting note, you know, obviously this is a classic car. It's not made anymore, but is is the uh, is the Borgward company gone, or are they making a comeback? They went out of business in '61. Okay, uh, they they couldn't get a bridge loan, and so they were uh, they went out of business. But recently. A company in China has started to build a Borgward SUV, and okay. that Borgward is for sale in China and Malaysia and India right now. So do they actually buy out the company, or do they just use the They name? used German engineers to develop the car, and then uh, it was built in, the factory is, is in China. Ron, what is your favorite memory about this car what's your, your or your favorite thing about the car uh, my favorite <clears throat> memory is uh several years ago 13 Borgward owners brought over their 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 Borgwards and did uh from new york to uh los angeles uh on route 66 oh <laughs> and uh i met up with them in missouri and and we would go two three hundred miles a day and wonderful people, and I really enjoyed myself, and it was a great experience. And then, of course, in uh, in Santa Barbara, we met up with the Borgward Club members in California. Okay. Oh, fun. Yeah. Fun, fun, fun. It's a neat place, the car community. Yep. Yep. Ron, thank you so much for sharing your story of this car, the history of the Borgward, uh, and for our viewers. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thanks for watching.